Hey, Adam. Hey, how's it going? Uh, good. How does it feel to be here this week? It feels great, man. I'm feeling awesome and uh, ready to, to put on a performance on Saturday. Do you feel like you're in enemy territory here to a degree, or do you, have you gotten a warm reception so far? <laughs> uh, you know, it's he's Canadian, so I guess it is his country, but, uh, you know, um, I fought up here a, a couple of times in my amateur days, so I, I'm pretty familiar with the Muay Thai community around here. And, uh, you know, um, I'm from the Pacific Northwest. This is the Pacific Northwest, you know, and I've stuck around and uh, continue to train and, and try to, to make it from where I, I started. And he's the one that's uh, moved out of uh, his hometown and into California. So I, I feel like you know, I'm a little more comfortable than then I guess you could say normal. Yeah, what kind of opportunity do you look at this as, right? Because one-on-one one in the UFC, pay-per-view, main card spot, like uh, not many people in your position get a spot like this. So do you put more pressure on yourself to like take advantage of this moment? It's a great opportunity. I don't know if it comes with any more pressure just because it, I feel like it's the same story. Um, it's, the, it's the classic story for me is brought in to face the hometown guy or the... Uh, the favorite, you know, um, kind of the, the gatekeeper, as you, uh, as you could say, you know, and so I don't feel like it's really any different. It's the same storyline. I'm, I'm here to, to mess that up, to steal some hype, and, you know, I'm looking forward for the, the opportunity because, like you said, there's not many uh, people that are in this position. You know, it's the third fight in the UFC, and I'm on the main card, so I couldn't ask for a better spot. So how do you spoil the party, obviously, without giving away the game plan, but do you see a lot of opportunity with Mike's game here? Um, we were both finishers, you know, um, so I, I see like major opportunity for both guys in there. But uh, yeah, I just got to go and stick to to my style of fight, um, you know, work at my uh, pace and my space. And, you know, um, yeah, we'll see how it ends up. But uh, I, I'm more than confident in myself, more than confident uh, against anybody in there. Adam over here. What's up, man? Hey, what's going uh, on? Good, good to see you. Um, do you have a lot of people coming up for this fight? Because, again, you mentioned you're from the Pacific Northwest up in Portland. Uh, did you have a lot of people coming down? Uh, I got a few coming up, you know, and not, not a tremendous amount. But, uh, you know, everybody's going to be back home, support me, send me positive vibes. So, you know, um, yeah, we'll see who uh, comes out from the Muay Thai community as well around here. Uh, Mike talked about the placement of you being on the pay-per-view. You're actually the fight behind Oliveira and Darius. What does that mean to you to be so highly placed on the card? I think, you know, obviously they're pushing Mike a bit, but I think it's also the style matchup as well. What does that mean to you? I mean, it's, it's huge. This is a dream come true. This is, uh, I want to be on main cards. I want to be potentially getting in main events, you know. Um, I don't want to be stuck around the bottom. And, you know, I, I couldn't ask for a better situation, to be honest. Are you taking a look at the betting odds? I think Mike's like a almost two to three to one favorite there. I mean, Vegas, you're going to learn. You're going to learn on Saturday. And uh, is, it, is it tough fighting a guy that's, you know, uh, there's no real trash talk or anything. Mike's been, you know, he's a pretty polite guy sort of living up to that Canadian moniker. Does, does that make it tougher to go into a fight or anything? Or do you, do you prefer trash talk? Like, what, what are sort of your thoughts on Mike as just a, a person in promoting this fight? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I don't know. He, there may not be any trash talk from him, but uh, I, 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 don't know, I have this chip on my shoulder, and I can just pick out these little things. And I don't know, maybe it's a little bit toxic, but I can pick out little things and just really kind of hang on to them and and use them as a, I don't know, tackle and fuel, as as you can put it, I guess. And just last one for me, uh, your teammate Brent Primus picked up a big win a few weeks ago. Uh, just how much are you feeding off that? Because a lot of people are counting him out in his fight. Oh, it's huge, you know. Um, helped him get ready for that, you know, as much as I could. And uh, it, it was great to see him go on there and, you know, pull out that, that W, especially when everybody had him counted out, you know, especially when, you know, the betting lines were against him as well. So, you know, I wanted to go on there and just continue that momentum, you know, that he went in there with and, and left with, so. Adam, right here. Uh, you had mentioned that you can kind of pick off these, like, little things that kind of, like, stick with you. Has Mike said anything specific that kind of has been gnawing at you? Like, maybe it wasn't intentionally trash-talking, but you picked up on it? I mean, he's kind of a, the king of the compliment sandwich, I think, you know. He, he starts you out with a little positivity, he hits you in the middle, and then he ends it with positivity, you know. So, uh, it's something that uh, my boss back in the day kind of was really good at. So, you know, I just kind of took, you know, a little bit of that and just... You know, <laughs> you know, this, uh, this, I, I remember what this feels like, and I'm just going to hang on to that and continue. You know, um, I think he said something like uh, he does, uh, he, he's re really well rounded, he does a lot of good things, but I'm just better than him in every direction, you know, in every aspect of the game. And, um, 
that he finished off with, but he's definitely one of the, you know, probably the toughest guy I fought, you know, so it's a good compliment sandwich there. Um, and I, I know a lot of people online and stuff when this, this, this matchup was announced, they're like, oh, fight of the night, fight of the night, possible. So it, from your perspective, you obviously want, you want a clean performance. You want to go in there and dominate. So it's when people say like, oh, fight of the night, in their minds, this is going to be a close fight. Is that an insult to fighters when they say, oh, possible fight of the night? Because that means you're going to be back and forth and I'm sure you just want a clean performance in there. I'm for, you know, for me, no. Honestly, this does have fight of the night potential. I think it is going to be back and forth, um, you know? He's a, he's a finisher in the first round. I, I'm a finisher in my own right. Um, I also know what it's like to be out of that first round and sec second round. So, you know, um, I think it is going to be back and forth. We're going to have to get through where he's most dangerous, and then we're going to get to where, you know, I have a little bit of the upper hand, and uh, we're going to see what his gas tank's like in the third. So, um, and, you know, I'm thrilled when fans say it's fight of the night potential. I want them to see Adam Fugus on the card and immediately know fight of the night potential. I need to see that fight. You know, um, I don't want them to, you know, see my name on there and go, oh, this guy's going to bring the best trash talk because I'm not good at that. You know, um, so them recognizing me for my fight potential is exactly what I want. Adam, to your left. Um, you know, Mike was calling out veterans before this. He was asking for a Robbie Lawler. You've had a couple of young guns, let's say now, with Kinoshita and Mike. I mean, are those the type of fights that you like, or would you be looking for, you know, a veteran, a bigger name? I mean, those are the type of fights that I got to take at this point. Like I said, I'm kind of the gatekeeper, um, you know, not I'm, I'm the, the betting underdog. And uh, so those are, I, those are the fights I feel like I got to take right now. And, uh, you know. If anything, it just kind of, if I go in there and I do my job, it pushes me along a lot faster. So we'll get to those, those vets, you know. Unfortunately, Robbie's retiring after this next one, so I won't, won't mention his name. You know, the, uh, the finishes that you mentioned, you've got eight straight. I believe he has eight straight. For your part, where does that mindset come from? It's a little bit of uh, the chip on the shoulder and the need to prove myself. Um, and then just that, you know, um, I don't know, that, that kill or be killed mentality, you know, I'm leaving it to the judges' hands as we saw, you know, last weekend, it, it can, it can't, sometimes it won't go in your favor and that can kill you more than if you just put yourself out there to, to you know, put yourself in that position to get the finish. Thanks very much. Hey, John Hernandez here, CBC News, right over here. Hey, I, I'm just wondering, I mean, obviously it's going to be a packed house at Rogers Arena full of Canadian fans, pro-Canada crowd. What's your message to those Canadian fans who will probably be rooting against you? <laughs> uh, I don't really have a message, but it, anywhere I go, it kind of seems about the same. I, I go in getting booed, and I, I leave getting the applause and some respect, you know, um, and that's all I can ask for is uh, at the end of the day, they, they, they recognize my game, and they recognize my talent, and, uh, you know, they, they respect me for it. Thanks. All for me. We do not, and that's, you know, that's a big part of, you know, why I um, wanted to blaze the quote-unquote Oregon Trail, the Pacific Northwest Trail, is there's a ton of great fighters out here that just don't get the push, you know. Um, I feel like that's, you know, unfortunate. You know, we have to, to move away to some of these bigger gyms where they're, they're just kind of meat grinders. You, you, you know, you go in these bigger gyms with all these guys trying to make it, and you hear of these guys getting hurt, you know, where we don't really have that uh, – I don't know, I still, we don't have that path directly to, you know, these promotions, the UFC, you know, the bigger ones. So um, that's why it was very, you know, important for me, um, why I've, I've stayed put and, you know, stayed loyal to my, my team and, and just my community. I mean, I feel like the path is much more um, testing you know, I think we're a lot more proven. We got to go through a, the thick of it, you know. Um, my first fight, I, I mentioned um, that I essentially had to kind of give up on the, the dream. And essentially, I had to let it go because if I woke up, you know, wanting that call every morning, by the time I went to bed, I was going to be disappointed and, and put, in a, in a, you know, going to bed with a negative mindset, you know. Um, so you kind of have to let it go and just uh, believe in what you're doing, what you're waking up and going and training for. And, you know, um, I mean, that's the best advice I can give anybody is, you know, you just, and that, 
and honestly, you know, that's why I think we're, you know, we have a lot of talent out there is because we have to go through the meat grinder of, of, you know, just waking up and training and, and getting our fights in and hope that somebody sees us. Thank you. Adam, right here. No. To your right. Adam, I heard that your dad shared the news that you're competing on the pay-per-view card. Um, how cool is it to share that experience with your dad now that you're, you're right here and just a couple of days away from performing? Um, you know, it was a special moment. I, I was, uh, I think I was in between training sessions and he sent me a, the text. He's like, did you know this? And, you know, um, <laughs> when I came up here and fought in Vancouver as an amateur Muay Thai fighter, you know, he was the guy that, that traveled with me and he was the guy, the only guy in the crowd that really knew me. So, you know, we've come full circle, man. We're back up here. It's, it's, it's time to, to, you know, show the, the world, you know, what I can do. Perfect. That's all for me. Adam, over here to your right. Yeah. You had mentioned that you sort of had to shelve that dream and put that idea aside of waiting on that call. As such, what did it mean to go out and get that victory in February and have that, not only get the call against Morales, but get a full camp, go out, have the performance you know you're capable of? I mean, it was really special for me, um, especially with just all the preparation went in, the, 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 all the work that my, my team and I put in, you know, a lot of... A lot of, uh, you know, in my camps, you know, I, I, I can always be the, the pessimistic one and, and it's never enough. We got to do better. And so to have them, you know, back the, backing me, reinforcing me, telling me, hey, man, we're, we got a great game plan. Um, this is, you know, this is how this is going to, you know, play out. And uh, to, to go in there with all the preparation that we had and it, it kind of just play out the way that we were envisioning was just tremendous so the, the win was you know that much more special you know not only because I, I was my first UFC win but because of the process as well awesome thanks up to your left um, you did a lot of talking about your sort of amateur uh, and Muay Thai career uh, in your profile you mentioned how your left kick is probably your uh, most dangerous weapon mm. and you also listed Yod St. Clair Fair Fairtax mm. as a hero of yours. Is that an influence from on your style from the Muay Thai great? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You know, um, when I was in Muay Thai that was that was the man, you know, he uh just just watching him operate, you know, they called him the the boxing machine or the uh, the the boxing calculator or something like that, and just to, to watch him shut down guys' style with a, a left kick and a left cross and a right hand was amazing.